What's going on YouTube? It's Pete coming in hot with another video, also known as that guy Pete you refuse to invite to gatherings. And today what we are here to discuss is the concept of the honeymoon phase and how when we all start out in a relationship, that's when everything seems to be at its best. We are all wearing a mask of sorts, right? And then eventually a moment known as the bait and switch happens where the mask falls off. We see one another's true colors. And as a result of seeing one another's true colors, um, which tend to be very different from what we initially sold pre-honeymoon phase, um, relationship yeah. tends to turn sour after that point. And as a result, things tend to end. And when things end, obviously, it can leave a lot of people feeling very bitter, uh, not feeling too good about where they're at in life and so on and so forth. So to wrap it up at the end, what we're going to do is just basically say, hey, you know, what kind of attitude and mindset should you have when you're going into these relationships and things like this? So without further ado, let's start with this idea of the honeymoon phase. What is the honeymoon phase? Well, the honeymoon phase, uh, as my mother likes to say, it's basically when you are gaga for the other person, right? When you're basically in a mental state where you're crazy for her and she's crazy for you. Genuine desire, at least, appears to be there. Attraction appears to be present. You enjoy each other's company. Intimacy is good. There's a lot of what we call love bombing, which is where you shower each other with a lot of affection. It's kind of like when, you know, they have their pet names and all this crap, and then everybody outside is kind of looking in like, ugh. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's a little too much, man. You got to chill out. The honeymoon phase is basically when both parties in question are on their best behavior. That is the honeymoon phase in a nutshell. So this is when a a man is, I guess, um, at his on his best behavior. He's his kind kindest. He goes out of his way to do things for her and things like this. Uh, she's in her feminine. She's as feminine, and well behaved as you know she could possibly be. She's not withholding the box, right? She's giving him affection. Pretty much everything that she knows he looks for uh she's giving that to him at least in the beginning of the relationship but the other half of the honeymoon phase is that both parties are hiding the skeletons in their closets and yeah people tend to not like it when you um reveal the skeletons in their closets because uh, when you do that their knee-jerk reaction is to gaslight you and say no you're crazy no, you're being unreasonable here. No, you're the one who doesn't know what you're talking about. You're the one who's 100% out of his bird. And I can speak from experience that that's exactly what happens. You point out something that bothers you, they flip the script on you, and so on and so forth. But most relationships for people under the age of 30 fail. In fact, 90% fail. The other 10%, they make it. What does that tell you about people's priorities under the age of 30? Well, it sounds like relationships aren't really that high priority for people in their 20s. We've explained ad nauseum why for the 20-something in the West, why it's like that. Because Chad still pay attention. And the men, well... A lot of these guys aren't even getting into relationships because they're invisible. And we know why the chads aren't in relationships because they're cleaning up. Stats don't surprise me at all that 90% of relationships under the age of 30 fail. But I guess a more accurate way to view the honeymoon phase would be to say it's the charade. It's people keeping up appearances making themselves look better than they actually are. 
And eventually what happens is you have the mask, it starts to crack, and then it falls off. And then the unflattering realities about people become revealed. So when the bait and switch happens, the true colors come out. Things start to get weird. Things start to slow down. Things aren't as intimate as they used to be. The attraction starts to fizzle. Genuine desire starts to come into question. Is it there anymore? You don't really enjoy each other's company as much. You don't really make time for each other the way you used to. You don't show affection the way you used to. You don't give attention the way you used to. Right? All these things, traffic starts to slow down pretty quick. And when you previously in the honeymoon phase had all these things that you enjoyed in the relationship, it made the relationship feel fulfilling. It was like you were on cloud nine. What ends up happening inevitably when something that you have been accustomed to for the past, let's say, six months, maybe even more, what ends up happening is the fights start. Now that the masks are off, now that we see one another for who we really are, right? Maybe I'm not as nice as I purported myself to be. Maybe you aren't as feminine as you purported yourself to be. Maybe our sexual histories were not what we initially advertised they were, and now we're figuring out the unflattering realities of one another's sexual histories, right? When you have all that coming out, the dirty laundry, it's coming out of the closet. People are seeing each other's stuff now. Well, what happens? Yeah, fights. Classic, you know what your problem is? That stuff starts to come out. And the fights usually don't just go away. Because both the man and the woman in the relationship, they feel they've been lied to. Absolutely. We talk about this all the time with the whole chameleon phenomenon, right? What do people do? They sell you a dream. And then after the honeymoon phase passes and everybody feels comfortable, the mask falls off and now the reality is here. But usually that bait and switch doesn't happen until the ring is secured. But of course, you know, you can't old habits die hard, right? If somebody's accustomed to being on the CC, yeah, they can try married life, but it probably won't last. But the general idea here is that fights happen. You start to distance from one another. You start coming home late because you're fooling around with other people and things change. You realize that relationships are work and work is hard. It's not easy. That's the part they don't tell you. In the rom-coms and the Disney movies. The part they don't tell you. What they'll do is they'll give you the honeymoon phase. They'll very much, they'll quickly like gloss over the bait and switch with like one little screw up. Usually on the guy's part. The Adam Sandler movies, I joked about this in the Oasis of the Surreal video. And then they act like, oh yeah, it's just going to reconcile at the end. 90% fail. For the most part, no. The reconcile does not happen. The bait and switch does hurt that much that it could destroy a whole relationship. It absolutely can. So, yeah, Chris Rock said it best, right? Two people can easily move a couch. When two people are working on a relationship together, you don't got to worry. But if only one person's working on the relationship, only one, That relationship's not going anywhere. And it doesn't matter if it's just the guy or just the girl working on it. If you feel that your partner is not working on the relationship, you got, you got to get the hell out of that relationship. But usually in reality, what ends up happening? What ends up happening is that the relationship, if it's not ended in a healthy way, which I mean, there's really no definitive 100% objective healthy way to end a relationship, right? It hurts like hell. But if you don't, Find a way to just get this out in the open and end the relationship and in as mature a fashion as possible. What ends up happening is somebody cheats. It's inevitable that somebody is going to cheat. The guy might cheat. The girl might cheat. Somebody's going to cheat. Because that's usually what happens when relationship dissatisfaction occurs. The reasons why relationship dissatisfaction occurs, it varies from person to person. Not getting attention, not getting affection, not getting intimacy, 
whatever the reason is, if you don't get out of the relationship, cheating is going to happen, and then that's going to force the relationship to end. And I mean, yeah, it's no surprise that, not, again, 90% are ending, considering how casual and deregulated the marketplace is. I am not surprised at all that most relationships fail. Doesn't surprise me at all. So the moral of the story is this, right? When you are considering entering a relationship with somebody, um, one, it's reasonable to have the expectation that the other party is transparent with you and also practice what you preach. Uh, be transparent yourself. Transparency is key because here's the thing. If you go into a relationship without wearing a mask, your face is your face. It is what it is. If that's kind of how you're handling this whole thing, that's going to put you in a better position for longevity in your relationship. Because again, you can build a relationship with a foundation of honeymoon phase and lies and sold dreams and things like this. But let me tell you something. It's a recipe for a house of cards. And a house of cards can very easily come crumbling down. Mm -hmm. But with transparency, with honesty, with integrity, with things like this, and actual goodwill, you could build a much better foundation that will lead to a... Uh, greater success. So my advice is, um, in the sense of, you know, as from, from a male perspective, you know, we always say, you know, maximize your attraction, you know, be fit, uh, be masculine, be stable, things like this, have good character. Women, you know, you know, also maintain uh, in the physical sense, you know, be, be modest, be feminine, also have character and morals of your own, right? Aside from that, it's like when you have these things, you present that honestly you don't hide things even if something's unflattering listen it is better to just air that out on the front end than to have it discovered later on say what you will personally speaking i would much rather be told the brutal uncomfortable truth than be told a lie and then figure out later on it's a lie aka this whole bait and switch thing and I think most people would agree with that. Nobody likes being lied to. Nobody likes being cheated on. Nobody likes being stolen from. Acts of dishonesty. Nobody likes that. Top shelf disgrazia. No question. So, understanding that, I can't help but be perplexed by people who are confused that if most people are not going into these relationships in good faith, right, that we have this phenomenon called the honeymoon phase, where everybody's on their best behavior, nobody's really just being themselves genuinely, being genuine with who they are. They can't figure out why 90% of relationships for people under the age of 30 are, are failing, because you figure by the time you hit 30, most people, not all, most are getting married. And those 50% of the time, those marriages are ending and that's pushing 60 now. And then if you keep pushing it up, uh, shout out to Aaron Clary, the book of numbers. You can check out that book. Great book. Um, the number of marriages that are happy and satisfactory are only like 15%. So the point is, I, I think people based on their happiness and results, they don't really have a grasp and handle on just the sheer amount of work that goes into a relationship and how important it is to be transparent from the jump. I think for my family, my parents, again, I always talk about how I grew up in a stable home. They were very transparent with one another. They were who they said they were. They conducted themselves the exact way they said they were going to conduct themselves. The behavior and the words matched. And when you have that consistency, that congruence, when you have all of this, again, that implicitly is going to result in the construction of goodwill and trust and things like this, things that are lost on the modern generation. For sure. So I would say, yes, going in with absolute transparency is the remedy. I'm not saying you have to sit at the table 
and fully disclose everything there is about you on the first date. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is the mindset you go in with is that if you're asked a question, don't lie about it. Don't sugarcoat it. This and that. We did talk about way back the discovery versus disclosure. Obviously, you want her to discover some things about you. That's way more interesting than you just giving her a book report about your life, right? Um, you know, spontaneous and mysterious and all that fun stuff. Like that's important, of course. But the point is when you're at when you're asked questions, man or woman, just just be honest about it. Yes, there is a very good chance that you being honest about something will result in you losing an opportunity with that person. But let me ask you a question. Would you rather cut the cord right there at the beginning or you have a lie discovered later on and now you have like six months, a year, 18 months, three, four, five years of just fighting and arguing over stupid little things that if you just answered the question honestly at the beginning, you guys could have avoided each other and been with much better partners. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. This was definitely a much shorter video than the other ones because I don't think this is a particularly heavy topic. I think this is a topic that even blue pill people understand, but their behavior does not match their understanding. I think they just pay lip service to this type of stuff. But for a red pill person or a black pill person even, um, I think we all agree that what our expectations should be is that this transparency should be there to save everybody time. Because we have lives to live. You can always go make more money, things like this, but you can't make more time. You can't make more memories. You can't. The point is spend your time wisely. Okay, that's what it is. So let's quickly recap. So the honeymoon phase, what is it? Masks are on. So it's a representative of you. It's not really you. In the honeymoon phase, the genuine desire is there. The spark is there, which is why everybody's trying to be on their best behavior, right? Talked about that yesterday. The attraction is obviously there. You're enjoying each other's company. You're making an effort to spend time with one another. You're not making excuses. You're not flaking on each other. Intimacy is good. Affection is good. Everything's on point. We call it lovey-dovey. Everything is on point. Okay? But you're going to see why that overcorrection is not really good. And it's better just to kind of have a more genuine and organic progression. Because what ends up happening is eventually you're going to get exhausted from keeping up the lie. And then the bait and switch happens. There's some chinks in the armor. The mask starts cracking. Everything falls off. And as the guy, you're not this knight in shining armor. And as a woman, you're not this goddess that, that you sold each other on. The true colors come out. And yeah, traffic slows down on everything. Affection slows down. Attraction slows down. Intimacy slows down. There's no passion anymore. A lot of sexless marriages end up like this. And that ties back to the whole genuine desire thing. A lot of bait and switching, a lot of BSing. And in RP space, we tell men to watch out on this with the whole chameleon phenomenon. Because, you know, women in that position, they kind of know. That the clock's running out. So if they want to have a family, the way they look at it is like, well, the skeletons in my closet are so damn unflattering that the only way I'm going to get a ring is if I sell a dream. Shout out to Brittany Renner again. <laughs> oh, man. But the point is, right, the real you comes out now. You weren't transparent from the jump. Now the real you is out. And oh, boy, is it disgusting. There's nothing attractive about this person because self-improvement takes work. Becoming a good person who has morals and values and ethics and character, you think that's easy? No, it is way easier to be self-interested and not give a shit what anyone else thinks. It's way easier, but there's no long-term payoff. When you're living your life like this, with your bait and switching and all that, you're living in the short-term gratification lane, not long-term fulfillment. And life is long, especially if you make terrible decisions. And as all this stuff starts to come out, the skeletons are rolling out of the closet, the fights start. You get distant. You start coming home late. You're not making an effort to see each other anymore. Okay? The relationships change because now that it's time to work and keep the relationship going, it's easy to start a relationship. That's easy. You just pick someone and go. But maintaining a relationship, ooh, that's work. 
And I can tell you, as somebody who's been in a position where um, I've put the work in for people who did not put the work in for me, uh, that was very unrewarding. And uh, I can tell you that I've been in the position where I was the one not really putting the work in and they were putting the work in. So I've kind of been in both situations. And um, yeah, now that I look back at it in retrospect, when I wasn't putting the work in, I kind of feel like an asshole about it. It wasn't fair. And had both parties been more transparent, we could have saved each other a lot of time. But when we're trying to avoid social disapproval, we're trying to, you know, not hurt each other's feelings and things like this. You know, you're younger, you don't know better. It just results in in bad experiences. And I think these bad experiences make people jaded. And then they think, well, I might as well just be self-interested. I might as well just not put the work in. I might as well just knock all the pieces off the chessboard and just do whatever. I make my own rules now. And that's what we're seeing in the modern times in a deregulated marketplace. We're seeing people just not give a shit about each other. And there's a whole section of men that are just invisible, like nobody cares about them. Like I said, when you deregulate, all the girls go to the top 20, pretty much. It is what it is. But um, yeah, when they realize it's work and nobody wants to put the work in, the relationship naturally falls apart. And at this point, one of two things is going to happen. Either these two people are going to stay in this crumbling house of cards until one of the two parties cheats and then it's over. Or somebody says something and they end it like mature adults. Usually the first one happens, not the second one. And that's pretty much it for the honeymoon phase and the bait and switch and how relationships kind of start off strong, but then they kind of fizzle out and they fall apart. And how this all ties to the genuine desire thing and how it all ties to just being transparent. Being transparent about who you really are as a person. Because there is a cost to being full of shit. Have you heard the story where the kid cried wolf? If you cry wolf too many times, people stop believing you. And then nobody takes you seriously. So that's definitely not a good place to be in when dealing with this. Okay? So that was the honeymoon phase. That was the bait and switch. That's how it all ties in with genuine desire. And why ultimately this honeymoon phase thing, um, it's, do, it's a great disservice to yourself. It's okay to genuinely desire somebody. It's okay for someone to genuinely desire you. But here's the thing. <laughs> If you're doing it to overcorrect for a bunch of skeletons in your closet, then the question is, is it genuine? Mm, very interesting. So, yeah, when you have relationships that start out under a fake premise, no surprise, 90% of relationships are falling apart. And even after the 30s, when people get married, no surprise that like 85% of people are bare minimum in a marriage and miserable. We need to reassess what matters in relationships because I think there was a time when people understood these things like my parents. They just understood what it meant. And um, now, not so much. Yeah, we talk about the ooga booga. We talk about the alpha imprint. We talk about all this stuff. But for the past two videos, I've been trying to get back just to the basics that even a blue pill person can look at and go, yeah, we're fucking that up. Yeah. Yeah, we got to fix that. So, yeah. That's pretty much all I got. Feel free to leave a like. Feel free to leave a dislike. Call me an asshole. Your comment will probably get shadow banned anyway. They'll take your likes away as well. But um, hit the subscribe button if you like what you're hearing. Um, yep, feel free to unleash all the logical fallacies, whatever you got. Ad hom, argument from authority, whatever you got. Poison the well, take your pick. But whatever you do, do not report the video because it is good information. And it does help my fellow men out there. And perhaps some of the logical sisters walking around. Come to our side. We have cookies. Tell the other girls what's up. And I will catch y'all for the next one. Later.